Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for your interest in our summer programs and joining us for our info session. My name is Julia Whitten, and I am the founder and executive director of Terranaut Club. We are a registered Canadian nonprofit organization that specializes in science and nature exploration for Girls Plus, which is girls in underrepresented genders ages 9 to 18 in the Maritimes. In this recording, you're going to be finding out about our summer programs, nomination process, uh, earn your way back initiative, and more. So please take a look. And if you have any more questions about our summer programs, you can reach out to us at terranotclub at gmail.com or through our website, which is www.terranotclub.com. Thank you so much. All right, so a little bit about our organization. We are a nonprofit organization founded in 2018. So that means this is going to be our fifth year of summer programs, which is astonishing to think about. Our mission as an organization is to encourage Girls Plus from the Maritimes to pursue STEM careers and become environmental leaders in their own communities. Specifically, we aim to work with underrepresented and or disadvantaged participants, so Girls Plus, but um, we certainly have Girls Plus who come from all backgrounds that attend our programs. And in terms of language, you'll probably hear me say the term girls plus a lot today. So uh, for our organization, what that means is girls or underrepresented genders. And a little bit about um, who we are as a team. So our leadership team and board of directors, we are a group of women in STEM that just wanted to create more opportunities for Girls Plus to get really meaningful hands-on experience in science and nature, as well as mentorship from women in STEM. So our summer programs are going to be led by a team of leaders and volunteers from diverse backgrounds. So both ethnic backgrounds, as well as educational and, and career backgrounds. Generally, we strive to create a welcoming, inclusive, fun, and casual atmosphere at our programs. So I always like to tell our participants, um, you know, it's okay if you have the wrong answer. There's no homework here. This is all just really about exploring and learning together in a really fun and casual environment. Um, and I emphasize this in all of our program descriptions as well, but no prior knowledge or no prior skills are needed. So if you're completely new to this, that is perfectly fine. If you are a seasoned pro, that's also amazing. We love having really diverse groups with us. So our summer programs, we're going to be offering nine summer programs this year, which is the most we've ever offered. Um, we're really thrilled that as we become more established in Nova Scotia, um, we have more and more people who want to join us. So uh, happy to be expanding our programming, but really still ensuring that we have that same quality that we had uh, in our first years. We were only running, um, let's say, I think our first year, we only ran two programs. We've come a long way. We are offering our programs this summer in five different communities. So Bon Portage Island, which if you're not familiar, is a research station uh, owned in part by Acadia University and Nova Scotia Department of Natural Resources. Uh, that island is located just about 20 minutes south of Barrington, uh, right off of a little community called Shag Harbor. We also have a program in Halifax slash Dartmouth. Um, this is the first summer really excited to be hosting programs at Kejimkujik National Park. Uh, really grateful to Parks Canada and Keji for inviting us to join them there. We're so excited to run those programs. Lunenburg and then a few in Wolfville and Windsor. So all of our programs are pay what you can. Uh, we really, really mean that. So when it comes to STEM and environmental education programming, we know that um, they often can be quite costly. So we wanna make sure that uh, our programs are as accessible as possible to Girls Plus from diverse socioeconomic backgrounds. So, uh, but pay what you can, if that's $5, that's fine. If it's the full cost of the program, that's also fine. Our programs this summer are all multi-day and overnight. So for the overnight part, we are either camping at provincial or national parks. So the national park would be Keji. Uh, the provincial park, I believe, is going to be Smiley's Provincial Park, which is located just out of Windsor. And we've been there quite a few times before. It's a great park. We also have a few programs. We're going to be staying in cabins at research stations. So that would be the Bon Portage Island programs, which are our uh, intermediate wildlife conservation programs. 
In terms of equipment, so uh, for all of our programs, uh, we ask participants to bring sleeping bags with them. For those where we're camping, we ask people to bring sleeping pads. So if your participant doesn't have any of that equipment, that's perfectly fine. We do have sets of equipment that we can lend out. Uh, another feature is that so all of the meals are provided that's barring any really significant dietary restrictions so where we are a pay what you can program we ask that if your participant has significant dietary restrictions that you help us out in terms of either sending uh, food along with them or helping us plan a specialized menu. And lastly, our programs are nomination based and we will get into that in a few minutes. So uh, our programs are offered at three different age ranges. We have our junior, which is from nine to 12 years old, our intermediate, which is from 12 to 15 years old, and then our advanced from 15 to 18. So if your participant falls at any one of those kind of intersections, so if they're 12 or 15 years old, uh, you can make a decision whether you'd like them to attend the younger age range or the older age range. Our programs are offered in two streams, so uh, marine biology and wildlife conservation, and we have some really, really fantastic activities that we um, get to do in, in these programs, and we try to make them as hands-on as possible. So I emphasize down here that we are a club, excuse me, and that's because uh, we really designed Terranaut Club as an organization for continued engagement. So we would love for participants to come back, you know, year after year um, and not only attend our summer programs, but we also offer quarterly guest speaker series. So that's a free online event where um, we invite a woman in STEM guest speaker um, from all over the world to come and just do a short presentation and we do a great Q&A. So allowing our participants to meet um, really cool women in STEM doing amazing wildlife research uh, all around the world. And in the fall, we also offer data science and coding workshops. In the past, those have been online uh, thanks to COVID, but we're hoping that we'll be able to have a few in person this summer. And I have a little star here uh, just to, to really highlight that um, as our program is growing, it means that we are having to update and adapt our selection process. So where in the past we've been able to accommodate um, all returning participants, um, that may change kind of depending on how many nominees we get per year. So um, we'd love to have continued engagement for kind of as much as, as we can currently accommodate. And all of these programs build on skills. So from the junior to the intermediate to the advanced, uh, all of these programs are, are scaffolded to make sure that we are building on these skills, building on confidence and, and trying to create some, some mini scientists and, and environmental advocates. The programs don't necessarily have to be taken in any order. So uh, if you look at our program listing, you'll notice that some of them say level one, some of them say level two. So we say for you, can, you, you to follow them where possible. So it is better if you start with a level one program and then shift to a level two program, um, but it's not necessary. So we know that summer can be a really busy time for families with vacations and everything else. So if your participant is only available for a level two program, um, we will do our best to, to make that work. And lastly, you can switch between streams. So if you start off in a marine biology program, you can go back and forth to you know, wildlife conservation. Uh, we really just are, are, are all here to, to make sure that uh, we can kind of support exploration in these different streams and the different topics that we cover. Our programs are small and, avert and immersive. Uh, this is, a, in my opinion, a really big part of, of Terranaut Club. We love to keep these programs small so that they can be as meaningful as possible. So our programs have uh, only 10 to 12 participants each and uh, between five to seven leaders and volunteers. So that means that we create a lot of opportunity for um, interaction time. And once again, that casual mentorship between our participants and our leaders and volunteers. And of course, our, our unique and immersive programming, which uh, I will show you in a few minutes. So uh, I think uh, when it comes to this, this unique programming that we offer, I'll, I'll show you some photos in a minute, but I wanted to just highlight some of our guiding principles and, and hands-on learning and experiential learning is, is one of the core ones. Uh, wherever possible, we really try to make it uh, as interactive and hands-on as possible because uh, we understand the importance of that and how valuable the learning experience can be. 
Many of our programs involve working with threatened and endangered species. So we've been so fortunate to form really amazing partnerships with um, research groups at different universities, as well as um, non-government organizations that do work with some of these species. And we're able to forge these partnerships and kind of tag along on some of these activities. Uh, and a note here that anytime that we're working with wildlife, we are doing so with trained professionals. So um, certainly your participants are not just going to be uh, kind of thrown into the mix with, with some animals. When we are working uh, alongside partner groups, so for example, we work with um, the Ocean Tracking Network outside of or in Halifax. We work with a bunch of different labs uh, based at Acadia University. Wherever possible, we try to make sure that we are working with women from these organizations just to make sure that we're once again increasing uh, representation and, and making sure that our participants see themselves in some of these different roles. We are learning about STEM careers in these programs and educational pathways. So um, this specifically applies to our advanced level programs for 15 to 18 year olds. Um, in those programs, we try to have uh, our participants conduct like mini interviews with the women in STEM that are leading the programs to learn about how they got to the careers they're in right now. And we also have them learn about um, different college and university programs across Canada that, that fit within the marine biology and wildlife conservation world to get familiar with what it takes um, to, to get admitted to these programs and uh, what it's like to study in these programs. And lastly, our activities, while they are very diverse, they, they tend to generally cover the topics of biology, chemistry, environmental science, uh, data science, and coding. Okay, and I have for you here, so this is our program listing. Uh, you may have seen this advertised on our website or our social media. And um, we have them organized by our age ranges here. So you'll see we have three at each age range, um, some of them wildlife conservation, some of them marine biology, as well as our dates and locations. So we're really excited to be offering this many programs this summer. Um, and I'll get into nominations in a second, but uh, our nomination deadline is by May 1st, and you can get to that at terranotclub.com, or you can also uh, head to the QR code there. Okay, so I'm going to switch my screen here for a second uh, to show everyone. So uh, I'm going to try to show you as much as possible on our website today, just so you feel a little bit more comfortable navigating, because uh, we do have quite a bit of pages on here. So this is our summer 2022 uh, website page. And uh, we have kind of a description of, of the programs and some of the activities. And then you'll see all of our programs listed down here. Each of them will lead you to a different page that provides a little bit more detail. So for example, let's go up to our Junior Marine Biology Level 1 program. Uh, so it has a description overall of the program, some of the activities. Uh, I must say that some of these activities are subject to change, uh, especially working with some of the research groups based out of, based out of universities. Uh, their fieldwork schedule tends to change. So um, we are, are hoping to certainly offer all of these activities, but, but some of them might change. Uh, so we have our eligibility, uh, a link to, to nominate different participants, and then also some, some photos of past programs. So um, this is uh, one of our favorite programs to offer, and I think it'll be the third or fourth year that we're offering this one, our junior marine biology. Um, and this is a great photo of some participants working with one of our volunteers, uh, Lisa. And this is an activity where we get uh, hands-on with lobsters. We learn about different anatomy and how to collect data, and we make some observations about their behavior and uh, yeah we have a lot of fun with the lobsters and um, the year that we ran this program so this is one of the activities we were out with a um, the coastal ecology lab based out of Acadia University and the women in that lab were conducting research on American eels so we actually got to join them out in the field uh, take a little boat trip with them set eel traps collect the eel traps and um, actually get to watch uh, the, the, the female scientists conduct surgeries on the eels to implant little acoustic tags so that we could track them in the water. So this was a really, really cool activity that we were so excited to be a part of. Um, and as you can see, it was we got really uh, fantastic weather and it was gorgeous to be able to be out there with them. 
So most of the program pages will have photos on them. However, we do have new programs that we're offering this summer. For example, all of our programs at Kedgy, so you won't find any photos on there. And um, I did also just want to highlight, so um, the only program that I think has kind of a, a different structure is our Steminist Leadership Development one. So I'm just going to talk about this for a few minutes. And this is for our Advanced Girls Plus, so ages uh, 15 to 18. And for our Steminist Leadership Development program, so we created this program because we had participants who, after spending a few years with us and, and getting a little bit older, they asked if they could come back and volunteer with some of our younger programs, uh, with our Junior Girls Plus. And we thought, oh my goodness, that's such an amazing idea. We're going to create a program so that you can do this. So for this program, there's two components to it. The first is uh, participants attend our Steminist Leadership Development Program. This uh, is going to be on July 2nd to 3rd this year. It's an overnight program, uh, two days. And that first program is just all about learning about your leadership style, how to be a confident leader. And our participants actually get to design activities that they then uh, get to run at our junior level programs. So the second component is that everyone who attends this program has to pick a junior or intermediate level program that they can attend uh, and they help us run that program so part of it is you know supervising participants um, you know helping with activities and as I mentioned delivering the activity they, that they got to develop so this program is a little bit of a different structure uh, than than all of the other ones and this is the second year that we're offering this and we're really really excited to to have more leaders in training join our team okay you go back here. So um, present. here we go. So all of our programs uh, are nomination based and nominees must be girls or underrepresented genders between the ages of nine to 18 who live in the Maritimes and meet at least one of our nomination criteria. So these criteria are as follows, uh, comes from a disadvantaged or low income background, comes from an underrepresented background. So that would be African Canadian, Indigenous, Hispanic, or Latinx, is a first generation immigrant, meaning they immigrated to Canada, uh, has led an environmental initiative at school or in their community, has led a science initiative at school or in their community, or is passionate about science, animals, or the environment. So we have quite a few different ways that participants um, can meet our, our criteria. And lastly, so individuals from outside the maritime provinces are welcome to apply for seats on our waiting list. And we have some participants um, from across Canada that have been amazingly engaged in a lot of our online events. And so that's why we have this option. Um, we recognize that uh, you know, marine biology programs are not offered everywhere in Canada. Uh, and so we will try to accommodate um, as many participants as, as we can. Okay, so a little bit more about nomination. So I mentioned our organization's mission before and that specifically we aim to work with disadvantaged and or underrepresented girls plus. Because of that, 50% of seats in all of our programs are reserved for participants who come from either that disadvantaged and or underrepresented background. Uh, our programs are small, like I mentioned, 10 to 12 participants. So that means you know, five to six seats in each program are reserved for, for girls plus who meet those criteria. And then the remaining seats are filled with participants who meet the other criteria I mentioned. And these participants are selected by um, at least three of our Terranaut Club Board of Directors members. And that's based on their nomination statement. And I'm gonna show you the nomination form in just a moment. So all nominees are gonna be notified of our decision on May 15th. And just as a reminder, nominations close on May 1st. And participants that were not selected can be placed on our waiting list if they choose. And really important to mention here that we get so much movement on our waiting list. So if you end up getting put on our waiting list, there is a good chance that you will be slotted into our programs. Um, you know, sometimes it's, you know, it's vacations that get planned or, or you know, last minute things that come up um, and participants have to drop out. So please don't be discouraged if you do end up on our waiting list. And since our programs are very small, um, we sadly can't accommodate all of our nominees. So if you don't get to attend this year, please, please try again in a future summer. 
Um, we're going to do our best to continue to expanding programs so we can accept as many people as possible. Um, and we, we think overall this summer we'll probably have room for just under 100 participants. Okay, so I'm going to show you the nomination form now. So here we go. Uh, May 1st, as I mentioned, is that deadline. We have a little bit of our eligibility criteria here, so you can review this. A little bit about our selection that I just went through. And here is our nomination form. So participant or nominees, uh, they have to be nominated by an adult that knows them well. That can be a parent or guardian, that can be a teacher, a coach, um, you know, a community group leader, what have you, just an adult that knows them well. And the information that we ask for, so at the top, it's a lot of very basic information, you know, tell us about your nominee, um, where are they from, what province, what are your nominee's pronouns, we want to make sure that we are being as respectful as possible. A little information about the nominator's name, uh, about the nominator. If the nominator is not a parent or guardian, we ask for that information as well. Just uh, if, in case we have trouble contacting you, um, so we can we can make sure that we can get in contact with you. How do you know your nominee? Which criteria does your nominee meet? You can select all of them that apply. So. Um, which programs are you nominating your participant for? So you can select up to two, uh, but each participant might only attend one program per summer. And then if you have selected multiple programs, which is your nominee's first pick? Just so we know, we can try to give everyone their first pick. If your nominee has participated in a program before, what type of program? So has it been an in-person summer program, one of our online guest speaker presentations, uh, data science and coding workshop, or in the past we've offered some career workshops as well. So there's a space for other there. And then this at the bottom, this is the nomination statement. So, you know, it's quite general. Tell us about your nominee, what makes them special? And then we say, please write five to 10 sentences. And how would your nominee benefit from our program? Please write five to 10 sentences. Um, so um, we anticipate this nomination takes maybe between 15 minutes to half an hour. If you are getting someone else to nominate your child, um, try to kind of be ready with, with all of this information that they might need. So that is our nominations. And I'm going to go back here. So that is for first time participants. And then we have actually something special for our returning participants. So it's called our Earn Your Way Back initiative. And this is to attend another program um, we ask that participants uh, complete an earn your way back activity or project and write us a short little report about what you accomplished and why you want to return. And similar to the nomination deadline, this is also due by May 1st. Um, submitting an earn your way back project does not guarantee you placement in a summer program, it just makes you eligible for one. And once again, um, you know, our selection process really comes down to just how many nominees that we get. So I can't say anything for, for certain here right now. Um, and if you are a returning participant, so you have to do an earn your way back activity, and you also still have to be nominated by an adult that knows you well. So don't forget that, that complimentary nomination part. And I'm going to show everyone our earn your way back bit here. Okay, here's a great photo of Lily Beth, a participant we've had for a few years now. So we've got a little bit um, about the, the initiative and then a bunch of example activities. So if you're a returning participant, um, you don't have to do one of these activities. You're welcome to think of your own. If you do think of your own, please send us an email just to make sure that, uh, that it, it meets our criteria for projects. And I'll just go over a few example activities here. So. Um, we have a few different categories, so career activities, you could write an email or letter to a female scientist asking them about their career or thanking them for their work. Um, thinking about what you might want to study after high school, do some research and find at least three different programs that you might be interested in. We get to environmental and STEM advocacy activities, so write a letter to a company telling them what you think about their environmental practices. Are they good, bad, could they be better? Uh, time to climate march or rally, leave it better than you left it. So do a, you know, a beach or a park cleanup. Um, we have, uh, let's see, explore your natural environment. So go on a nature hike and identify some of the wildlife that you see. Start a nature journal. 
we have some participants who have, are really gifted artistically. And so we thought we'd put some art-based activities in here. So you can create a STEM inspired illustration, like a scientific illustration or a sketch of a woman in STEM and provide a description to accompany your illustration. And um, you can design your own infographic or you can watch one of our past guest speaker presentations on our YouTube channel and draw a picture or image that um, about something that you learned. So we have lots of different activities here. Please feel free to, to go through those. And um, as a reminder for participants, uh, Louisa is asking, do we have to do every activity from a... No, just pick one activity from any of these. Uh, if you think of a different activity, like I said, just email us to let us know um, what you're planning. And be sure to get parent or guardian approval before you do any of this, especially if you are doing like a beach cleanup or something. Um, obviously, watch out for sharps, have a parent guardian, um, you know, attend and, and help you with that. And if you're not submitting, um, let's say, like an illustration that you made, let's say you do a, a park or a beach cleanup, please have someone get some photos of you and make sure that you include some photos in your report. So the activity report down here, it's pretty simple. So um, uh, the bulk of it is in two to three sentences. Tell us what you did. So describe your activity. Uh, five to 10 sentences, what did you learn from this? Five to 10 sentences, why would you like to come back from an, for another program? And if you have any supporting documents like an illustration or photos, you can email those to us at terranotclub at gmail.com. Just gonna check the chat here, okay. All right, so that is our Earn Your Way Back uh, initiative. Go back in here. And, um, you know, obviously we have all been, been uh, plagued by, by COVID these past few years. Uh, in 2020, we were not able to offer any summer programs, as you can imagine, at the start of COVID. And instead, we offered uh, 25 different online events for participants just to make sure that we could still engage with them and, and have some fun online. Last year was a bit of a middle ground. So we offered eight in-person programs last summer, um, but they were they were adapted. So, um, you know, it, it wasn't kind of our full roster. It wasn't our full offering. Uh, and we are hoping this summer, right, fingers crossed that um, things are looking good enough in, in the Maritimes and in Nova Scotia um, that we can apply our best case scenario here. Uh, but unfortunately right now it's, it's just too soon to tell. So we will be following all of uh, Nova Scotia public health guidelines. Last year, they put out a report that was kind of a, a guide to um, organizations who are offering summer camps for kids. And we, we followed that. Uh, we anticipate that that guide will probably be updated in the next month or so. So when that is updated, we will reach out to everyone who has made a nomination and just provide an update about what we think summer is going to look like. So I've presented here a best case scenario and a worst case scenario. So our best case scenario is no masks, um, operating as usual, full overnight programs. And uh, we do, we will still require symptom checking kind of uh, when we check in participants for our programs. And we will of course reserve the right to send participants home if they do present with symptoms. That's our best case scenario. Our worst case scenario, um, this might change, I hope it doesn't, uh, but would be that masks are required in indoor settings. So if this is the case, we would not be able to honor medical mask exemptions. Um, and we're very sorry about that, but of course that would be for the safety of, of all of our participants. Um, if COVID is, is looking really, uh, really troubling again, we would have slightly smaller programs. We would have maybe a few fewer participants and fewer volunteers just to make sure that our overall cohort or overall groups um, are fewer than 15 people, which is what uh, Nova Scotia Public Health was recommending last year. Uh, some of our junior and advanced level programs might be shifted to day programs, meaning there would be no overnight component, we wouldn't be camping, um, and we would ask participants to bring their own food, once again, just for everyone's safety. Um, ho hopefully, right, it's, it's our best case scenario and we're able to have people, you know, camping together in tents, but we certainly um, wouldn't want people to feel uncomfortable doing so. 
And um, in this worst case scenario, we would also be requiring you know, symptom checking uh, at check-in and once again would reserve the right to send participants home if they presented with, with symptoms. Um, and if participants presented with symptoms, we would certainly notify all of the parents and guardians uh, at the conclusion of the program, just an update about, about what happened. So um, it seems kind of like a somber note to, to end that on, but like I said, hopefully it's a best case scenario and we're able to have a, a really fantastic summer with our participants. Um, let's see, so uh, it's, We've got about uh, 10 minutes left for questions. And I apologize again about my internet outage at the start. I was hoping we would have a little bit more time, um, but we do have yeah, some time for questions right now. So I will stop sharing my screen. And let's see here. So feel free to, at this point, either you can unmute yourself to ask a question, you can put your question in the chat. Um, as a reminder, this is being recorded. So if you don't want to have your, your image, um, please turn off your video. Uh, and you can either put up your hand or just pop a, a question in the chat. So any questions to start us off? Yeah, Marnie. Hi, I just had a question about the age ranges. <laughs> so I see the, the, you know, nine to 12. Two, I've got two kids, one who will be turning nine in August and one who will be turning 13 in June. Is it how old they were in January or how old they are on the program date? How old they are on the program date. Um, and there, there is some flexibility there. Um, you know, we have some families that want to keep their kids together in a program. So if, if you know, they have one participant that's maybe like a year older, sometimes we can accommodate that. Um, but we do have some restrictions there as well. So we try to limit to that to like kind of two siblings. Um, if we go any higher than that, it ends up being like a third or a half of our program uh, just because they're so small. Yeah. And hi, Tess, by the way, nice to see you. <laughs> Thanks for your question, Marnie. Uh, thank you. And Jane was hoping to be here. She's actually the one that registered, but she had music. So, okay. Well, yeah, send my best to Jane. All right. And we have some questions in the chat here. So what places um, have the marine biology programs? Yeah. So our marine biology programs are in a few different communities. So our junior ones are in the Wolfville or Windsor area. Our intermediate marine biology is in the Lunenburg area. And then our advanced marine biology is in Halifax slash Dartmouth, as well as Wolfville. So that program is a little bit different where um, it's three days. So the first day is Halifax Dartmouth and then the next few days are, are Wolfville. And of course we provide all transportation between activities there. Uh, Louisa says, are there any options for written earn your way back activities? Yeah, so you can take a look. So one of our, our reading and writing activities is to just kind of pick a, a book that is somehow based around STEM or, or the environment. Um, provide us with like a short little book report. But if you think of something else, Louisa, like I said, just send us an email. We're more than happy to keep adding to our, our list of possible activities. It keeps growing every year as participants keep um, providing more awesome example activities. All right, so we've got a few more uh, minutes for questions, but I'll just uh, give everyone a minute. And I wanted to, I'm just gonna share my screen again to do, um, to show everyone. So uh, just our, our homepage of our website. Um, so once again, terranotclub.com, and you'll notice that it brings you to a landing page that has you pick from Canada or the US. And we've got lots of great photos on our landing page. So. I'll just go through a, a little bit of these because um, I didn't have any photos in my presentation. So um, this is a shot of one of participants, Mora, and she is retrieving fish traps that we set in a saltwater pond on Bon Portage Island. And that was for our uh, intermediate wildlife conservation programs. We caught hundreds of tiny little fish and had so much fun handling the fish and measuring them. And after we did that, we were able to um, take some of the measurements and do like a, a data science or coding activity 
visualizing some of that. Uh, but it's very variable every year. So I know there was a program last year, maybe the one test was in that we didn't catch any fish, which was so, so funny to go from like 400 to none. Um, this photo here is, uh, so this is an American eel and this is uh, an endangered species. I believe this was at one of our junior marine biology programs. Um, and what's happening in this photo is this eel is actually being anesthetized or sedated. And how we do that in uh, the marine biology world is we immerse the animal in a bath of clove oil, which tends to surprise people. A lot of people associate cloves with like a, a Christmas ham or something. And if you have ever chewed on a clove in your mouth, you'll notice that it makes your mouth go numb. Um, so that's what we're actually doing with, with the animals here. The, the female scientists we were working with put them in this bath for a few minutes just to calm them down and sedate them. And then they they hold them on the table and perform that surgery I was talking about where they insert a tag and it was really cool. Uh, and all of our participants got to help measure the eel and handle it and help release it back into the water. Um, oh, let's see, this is a, a great photo here of one of our participants, Willow, and one of our volunteers. So this is from our Intermediate Wildlife Conservation Program, once again on Bon Portage Island. And um, Let's see, so Lara here is holding a leeches storm petrel chick. Willow is holding one of the adults. And we got to work with female scientists from one of the Acadia biology research labs uh, to help them with their research on the island. So this is certainly one of the, the coolest hands-on activities, um, getting to actually hold these little chicks. They are so fluffy and so cute. Um, and it was a really great experience, once again, in learning about data collection and working with wildlife, respecting wildlife. Um, a photo here from our food science program that we won't be offering this summer. Some great shots of being on the island. Here's another great photo of a little leech's storm petrel chick. I'm learning to work with those. Um, this is from our technology and marine conservation program where we built little drones and learned about how drones are used to help in marine conservation. This is from our intermediate marine biology program where uh, we go on a whale watching tour with our friends at Lunenburg Whale Watching. Um, and I don't think we have seen a whale yet because uh, the whale population is changing outside of Lunenburg, but it was a beautiful ride and we got to see a few different species of harbor seals and seabirds, so it was a lot of fun. And we spend some, some time on boats, not in all programs. And this is more leeches, storm petrel. This is Bon Portage Island again. Um, this is having some fun at Smiley's Provincial Park. So um, we do learn to snorkel activities and swimming. Uh, this is one of our participants, Faith. So some of activity or some of our programs involve dissection activities, which I know not everyone is sold on, but um, where possible, we always try to encourage our participants to step a bit outside of their comfort zone. So, um, you know, if you've never done an activity before, just give it a try. You never know until you try. And, you know, if you hate it after that, at least at least you've, um, you've given it a go. But it tends to be a lot of fun, you know, even with some squeamish folks, there's always some squeals that come out of it, but also really educational, learning about anatomy, learning about the dissection process. Um, we do a dissection of invasive chain pickerel at our intermediate marine biology program, and um, we're able to actually cut open the stomachs of these chain pickerel and look inside to see what they're eating. And it tells us a lot about not only invasive species, but how um, the food chain can be disrupted in different environments when an invasive species comes in. And this is our tech and marine conservation program. So we got to go to the Aquatron um, at Dalhousie University, which is this huge research facility um, where they are able to bring in marine wildlife and study them in this basically giant tank. We were working with um, these amazing women from the Ocean Tracking Network. And so these are some of our participants. This is Lily um, and Aslan who were learning how to use uh, an ROV or a remotely operated vehicle. All right, so I just wanted to show you some program photos there and I'll check the chat. So let's see. For different questions, could you be able to go to a different time setting after you choose a date? Um, 
Yeah. So if, if you sign up for a program and you get selected for it and you're no longer able to attend that, there might be some possibility to switch programs just if we're able to kind of find someone in another program. Um, but where possible, try to only pick programs that you think you will be available for. Thanks for that question, Kyla. And feel free to ask any other questions. Louisa is asking, uh, what is the sleeping setup like on the intermediate programs? Yeah, great question. So um, for our intermediate wildlife conservation programs on Bon Portage Island, we stay in cabins uh, that have bunk beds. So there's two cabins on the island that we use. Um, one of them has 14 bunks. So uh, in a non-COVID year, we would completely fill up that that whole cabin and have a lot of fun all hanging out in there during a COVID year depending what it's looking like we might split that up into two separate cabins just so we can um, uh, not have quite as big of groups so for those cabins the bunk beds already have um, like a mattress on them so you're just required to bring a sleeping bag a sheet and blankets if you want whatever you're comfortable with a pillow and then for the uh, intermediate program, uh, marine biology in Lunenburg, so that is camping. So we stay in tents, um, depending on, once again, COVID. So um, it might be smaller tents with two to three people each, or sometimes we have this bigger tent that we can put five or six people in. So for that program, we ask you to bring a, you know, a sleeping bag and a sleeping pad, something to, to to be on. If you don't have one of those, we do have a few that we can lend out. Um, and uh, kind of related to that question, so uh, on Bon Portage Island for our wildlife conservation programs, there are no, there's no um, like running water or kind of uh, established bathroom facilities. There is a composting outhouse that we use, and then there's also some water filtration that we use for, you know, drinking and, and washing dishes and all that. So that program, by, by the end of it on the fourth or fifth day, sometimes everyone's kind of scratching their heads and feeling a little bit smelly, but I like to think that it's, it's part of the fun of the program, um, especially for, for people who are interested in getting into biology and, and field work. Um, you know, that's the reality of it. Sometimes you have to rough it a little bit. And then um, the marine biology program in Lunenburg, similarly, there is an outhouse, there's no shower facilities. So um, the vast majority of our programs don't have shower facilities and we're using um, outhouses for those. Great question, Louisa, thanks for asking that. And um, I know we are at 2 p.m. So if anybody has to leave, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so sorry again about my internet dropout at the start and the thousands of ants that, that somehow were attracted to our router. Um, feel free to, to stay on if you have any extra questions that you would like to ask. I'll hang out for another few minutes. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, thank you so much for, for joining us and uh, hope to hear from you soon. If you have any questions about the programs, you can email us at uh, terranotclub at gmail.com. I'll put that in the chat. Um, you can find this con contact information all over our website. Um, you can also reach out to us on social media. So on social media, we are at Terranot Club. Yeah, thanks so much for our new participants for joining. So a few more questions. So let's see here. Okay, so for the Lunenburg program, do you camp there or smileys? Yeah, so that's our intermediate marine biologist program. And in past years, we've hosted it at the Morton Center for Environmental Science. So this is another property that um, belongs to Acadia University and I believe the Coastal Action Center. Um, I anticipate that we will be there again this summer. So, um, that it's it's a field station um, with a few bedrooms but usually they have summer students in there so it's a really vast property and so we set up um, tents just outside of that main station um, kind of near the outhouse and all of that so some facilities are nearby um, so that one is not at a provincial park that one is is at this research station Check the chat 
feel free to um, ask any more questions that come up. Another great question, what sort of food is on the menu? Yeah, so we try to provide a menu at least a week ahead of time so that everyone can kind of have a look. Um, participants are welcome to bring their own food, especially if, I know sometimes we get picky eaters. So, excuse me, we, we certainly, we don't have anything, um, you know, really out of the ordinary on our menu. You're not gonna find any, Thing really crazy or really spicy, right? We try to make sure it's um, food that most people are going to be comfortable with. Um, we try to have vegetarian options available because we do have some vegetarian participants. Um, vegan is more difficult for us to accommodate, once again, because we are a pay what you can program. Um, sometimes we have participants with lots of allergies and dietary restrictions. So if that's the case, once again, we ask parents or guardians to try to send along some, some food just to, to help us out. Um, we have a really small staff that works these programs, and we usually end up having um, one of our fantastic volunteers handle um, the cooking uh, and the cleaning up. So um, we will try to work with you to, to make sure that, um, you know, everyone, of course, is, is happy enough with the food. We don't want anyone going hungry, um, but some sample meals. So let's think. Um, we do like, we'll do hamburgers, we'll do hot dogs. Sometimes we do spaghetti. Sometimes we do like a stir fry. Um, I will have to, to look uh, deeper into our menu, but like I said, we try to have that available like the week ahead of time. So everyone can have a look and make sure they're comfortable with it. And then we always have kind of classic staples, um, making sure that, you know, nobody has any, if no one has uh, peanut allergies, PB and J is a really, really great backup. Not that we would have that for every meal, but in case anybody gets really desperate, um, those are those are some good options. Lots of fruits and veggies. Um, you know, we try to make sure everyone's drinking lots of water, especially because we are outside um, for the for most programs. So let's see. Um, so what would you do with people who come from a different time zone and their sleep schedule will get mixed up? Um, yeah, so if you're coming from Ontario, it is only one hour behind. So I don't think your sleep schedule would be too disrupted. Um, and hopefully we have, you know, exciting activities that make you happy to get out of bed or out of, out of your tent in the morning to join us. Okay, another question here. Is a new nominee at a disadvantage if they are just passionate about marine biology versus having led an environmental initiative in their school? Is doing lots of projects and speeches at school um, regarding marine biology and the environment count? Yeah, okay, so a few different questions there. Um, so when it comes to, actually, I'm just gonna share my screen so we can all look at this, that'll be a little easier. So let's see for a nomination. So um, these are our different criteria. And um, the two criteria that, that take precedent are our comes from a disadvantaged background or comes from an underrepresented background. So like I said, 50% of seats are reserved for people who meet um, these criteria. And then the other four, they all count for the same uh, amount of weight, if you will. So those are kind of all equal. We don't have anyone that is um, uh, that is kind of ranked above the other. Um, and let me see that second part of that question was, um, is doing lots of projects and speeches at school reg regarding marine biology and environment count? So if you have a returning participant who has to complete an earn your way back activity, something that they have done at school does count. Um, we love it when we, we love to see our participants, um, you know, taking opportunities in their classroom to do projects about marine biology or environmental education, environmental science. That is great. Um, they do just have to, you know, write an additional report specific to the questions that we ask about, about their activity, what they learned from it, why they want to come back. Um, and then in terms of the nomination statement, so um, uh, I, I mentioned this before and it's, it's kind of tricky because once again, it, it depends on how many nominees we get. So 
Last summer, for example, we were actually able to accommodate everyone. So we had about, I think, 70 or 75 slots that last year. There were probably 10 to 15 people that were initially put on the wait list. And like I said, we usually get a lot of movement on our wait list. So some people had to, to drop out for you know, a variety of, of different reasons, and we, we were able to slot people in. Um, I anticipate this summer, we are going to have probably once again, more nominees than we have slots in our programs. So um, depending on how many nominees we have, it kind of changes um, exactly what we're gonna be looking for in, in those nomination statements. But we do just ask, you know, write about your, your participant as best as you can, tell us why you think they would benefit from this experience and are really deserving of this experience. Um, we do our best to um, have a mix of new and returning participants, um, depending right how many nominees we get. And um, you know, if, if you're not selected for, for this year, we do ask that you really do try to come back in a future year. Um, as we get more people who wanna join our program, it, it's helpful for us actually to approach some of our funders and say, hey, look how many people who want to participate. Um, you know, we're looking for additional funding to run these programs. So with increased demand, we're hoping to be able to, to have more and, and more programs. Thank you for that question, Catherine. Um, if you have uh, other questions related to that, you can chat Adam in here or um, just send us an email. Um, another question for kids with peanut allergies, what would be the backup for them? That is a great question. Um, I would have to think about that for a minute, but if you're really concerned about the menu, once again, send us an email and um, we can, we'll try our best to, to work with you to make sure that um, you have food that you're, you're happy to eat. Um, because of a lot of our programs are outside, so we're in, in the sun and we're, you know, hiking around or doing fun stuff. Um, everyone tends to be really, really hungry when it comes to mealtime. So you want to make sure that uh, you've, you've got something you're, you're happy to be eating. Thanks for your questions. All right. So I'll give this just another few minutes to see if we have any other questions come in. And if you have to take off once again, thanks again for joining us. I appreciate you being here. All right, so Looks like that's all for questions. Uh, thank you so much for coming and for your engagement today. I appreciate all of that. Reach out to me if, if anything comes up and uh, we are looking forward to summer too, Catherine. All right, so cheers everyone. Hope to see your, your nomination soon. Thanks so much. See you, Kyla. Bye, Louisa.